For those that care, this video is filmed on the Fujifilm X-T4 using the 18 to 55 f2.8 to f4 lens. Hi guys, Thomas Busby here, and for this week's video, I'm going to talk about the process I went through and the main tips I could give off for setting up and selling prints online, especially as a landscape photographer. Now, I need to state a couple of things before we start. This video is sponsored by absolutely no one. There are no links, no affiliate programs, no, well, there are going to be some recommendations about who I went with, but overall, my goal was to better sell prints globally. Now I'm not saying the options that I pick are the best options for everybody, we're just going to go through what I felt were the major pros and cons, the best tips, the top, I think I've got nine in general, tips for setting up and selling prints online. Now the first major thing you need to work out, the biggest question you need to ask yourself, is what do you want to sell? And for me, there were a few options. Do I want to sell framed prints, unframed prints, canvases, metallic prints, merchandise like t-shirts and hats etc, books, printed or digital, and then digital images. Now, digital images is, a, is an interesting one. I'm not going to rule that out completely, but it's not a path I've decided to take. There can be a lot of profit because there is no cost to digital images, but at the moment I'm still a little bit concerned about losing control of my work. Now that might sound like a real obvious question to ask yourself, like what, what are you going to sell? But there are a lot of pros and cons to each and every one of them, and you really need to work out what pros and cons of each product suits you best. For me, the main one was printing. Do I want to print it myself, or do I want to get someone else to print it? Now when I say print it myself, I don't necessarily mean own a printer, but have the physical copy in my hand and send it myself, or do I want to get it done in a lab and sent straight to the client? There's some real good pros and cons for each of these, especially as my goal is global shipping, getting it printed somewhere else and sent straight to the client is really tempting, especially if that somewhere else is far closer in the globe to wherever that client lives. However, one thing that scares me about getting printed through a lab, especially after doing a lot of printing myself, is not having that control of print quality. So I am confident and comfortable with printing, and different color profiles, different paper choices can really affect detail and shadow tones in a lot of my images, and I, and I want to have that say. I would like to be able to sign it in person, not use just a digital signature if required. I want to know that what I am sending out to the client is as happy and as perfect as I want it to be. So for me, printing it myself was the best solution for me. Just to, <laughs> maybe not the most cost efficient, but it set my mind at ease knowing that the client was going to get the best possible image I could give them. Which brings us around to question number three, shipping. How are you going to get it to your client? Now if you're printing through a lab, they might just send it straight to your client for you. But if you want to send it yourself, this can really rule out a lot of options. For example, framed prints, canvases, etc. Sending them globally is you really got to go all out on your packaging, like wooden framing, heavy packaging, to guarantee those prints will survive. But for me, I've just decided to go with prints and a tube. When picking these, look for a couple of different sizing options. Your print can be one of these three whips wide, but as long as you like, as long as it can still roll up to fit inside of there. But get these options and write down the cost for each and every one of these tube sizes that you end up picking. See, the advantage of a tube is this is very, very rigid, very light, and relatively small given the size of the print. And so this, for me, worked out the easiest option to try and still keep costs down, but quality high. And then once you know your three sizes of your parcels, and you can probably work out a rough weight, you need to work out cost to ship to different parts of wherever you want to send to. For me, it was globally. But I don't want to work out cost for every single country just yet. I want to get my website up and running. So I'm going to pitch some major continents. I'm going to go New Zealand, where I live. Australia, China, United States, the United Kingdom, Canada. I just picked some of the major continents and through the New Zealand Postal Service I could put in the dimensions and weights of those tubes to work out how much it would cost to send to each one of those countries. You need to work that out similar. Once again, make sure you're keeping track of all these costs. The cost of the tube and the cost to ship it to different parts of the world. Now question number four you need to ask yourself is what size do you want to print your images? And this isn't actually as, as easy as you'd think it would be. So you really need to standardize it so your client, when they receive it, can easily find a frame. Now you could just make it a requirement for anyone that buys your prints has to go to a professional framer and get a custom frame done. But for me, I was concerned about that giving a little bit of a, a feel bad vibe to, the, to receiving the images and that final result with a hidden cost that they couldn't prepare for. It's not my fault, but I don't want to put that upon my client. I want a framing to be standardized. So if a client just went to some cheap little bulk area framing place, 
they can still order a frame, find a frame that would fit my images. So I'm going to go and try and work out some standard sizing, which will mean recropping some of your images. For me, I went with the square ratio. I think it was a four by five ratio and then a slightly more panoramic ratio. But once again, I'm just picking like say three sizes for each different ratio and working out costs to print each one of them. Which brings us back to question number six, costs. Hopefully you've been writing down these costs for everything. How much it costs to get your images printed? How much it costs to get those prints shipped to you if you're getting printed at a lab first? How much does it cost to ship those prints globally? How much does it cost for everything? Write it all down, put it on a spreadsheet for different countries, different products, different sizes, and calculate it all out. This is a little bit boring, maybe. It's not as exciting because we haven't even started building the website yet. But before you have an online store, you need to know how much it's going to cost you in the end before you can work out how much profit you need to make. Now speaking of costs, this is a real hard one to answer for, and I'm sorry, I can't give you an exact formula to work out how much you should sell your images for. But an easy way to work it out for you is to look at your inspiration, to look at your competition, to look at the people around you and abroad, and find out how much they are selling their images for. You need to be relatively competitive, especially considering how good or bad you think your work is by comparison. And for me, this was really vastly different. So a lot of New Zealand photographers charge a lot more than some of my favorite global northern hemisphere photographers. And I was really shocked at the price differences, especially seeing the quality of some of those northern hemisphere photographers compared to some of my more local photographers. There was a, quite a, a difference, e even considering global shipping. And so this was a conflict. So most of my viewers here are not in the southern hemisphere, they're in the northern hemisphere. But to ship from New Zealand to the other side of the world isn't cheap, so it really was gonna affect my end profit partly. And I suppose you could ask yourself the question, do you want to be cheap and try and sell lots, or do you want to be exclusive and not sell many, but make a higher percentage of profit? And in the end, I decided to go with both. I'm going to do the vast bulk of my work a lot cheaper than I feel I should. Purely because I want it to be in people's houses. I want people to be easily be able to support me, and unfortunately from getting a ship print to, from New Zealand to the other side of the world, it does cost a bit, so I need to drop my prices a little bit just so I can be competitive with those Northern Hemisphere photographers. But then at the same time, I don't want to be known just as a cheap photographer. So the solution to that is optional, limited edition prints. Every once in a while, I'll do a run of say only 50 of a print or 10 of a print, and I'll have a high, a much higher markup in those images, much higher profit, but a limited run to, to make it that little bit of a difference. And I think this is that solution, the way to have a, an option to appeal to your masses that maybe just, especially in an, the pandemic economic time we're currently in, don't necessarily have the budget to spend on higher premium prints. But then some people still want an exclusive higher premium image. And so that's where, for me, the limited edition option will come into place. Okay, so now with, we've done dealing with numbers, it's time to start creating our website. But first of all, you need to ask yourself, where? Where do you want to have your website? As in, what service do you want to use for creating it? There are a lot of popular options. Squarespace, Shopify, WordPress, Wix, Equid. There are a lot of companies out there all trying to get your website hosted through them. And I'm not saying any one is better than the other. I would definitely do research on each and every one of them. I spent quite a while researching this to find out what was the best one that suited me. They all have their pros and cons. They all have well, actually, the first thing you should do is write down what is important for you. Things that I considered was the ongoing cost, the overall look, how easy it was to update, the percentage of profit they would take. Did they offer extra services on top of some of the others? Some of them, the services I looked at, for example, Smug Mug Pro, is one of those options that will print your images and send them to your client for you, which was a great global option, but they do take 15% of the profit, which is far higher of the profit, which is far higher than a lot of the other options. So consider all this. In the end, I reached out to some of my favorite photographers, well, sorry, some of my photographers that I had that had fantastic websites, and I just asked them who they used. And the most common resounding feedback I got 
was Squarespace and Shopify in one. Squarespace for the, the look and design. It is and seems to be majority, and in my opinion as well, the most beautiful looking websites. But Shopify for that social media integration. That was another thing I really considered and put a lot of work into. I want my website to look great on a mobile device, and I want it to work nice and very well, say, with my social media platforms, for example, YouTube and Instagram. But it's not just the cost of that hosting service that you need to be concerned with. You also need to work out how are you going to receive payment. The most popular options, I guess, are say like WooCommerce, Shopify will sort it out itself, PayPal, Stripe, Square. There are quite a few e-commerce options for taking and receiving money. You need to get that money into your bank from the clients. And also be aware a lot of these will have different fees associated with them. Quite often just a percentage of your sale. And so while you might have the ongoing cost from the, from the hosting, for example, Squarespace charged me a yearly fee to use them. They also take, for the plan I picked, 3% of my sale. And then Stripe and PayPal also take a percentage of my sale as well. So I am losing a little bit, but you want to work all this out when weighing up which options suit you best. In the end, personally, I went with PayPal and Stripe. These seem very easy to set up for me, and I like the look. Finally, stage nine, you need to build your website. Now this, for some, can seem a little bit daunting. I have a website already. For those that are interested, my old website was with Adobe Portfolio. It was a free one you get as part of your Lightroom Photoshop subscription, but the downside of it was it wouldn't let you sell prints online. It didn't have an e-commerce. So for me, I needed to copy and paste a lot of the information from my old website over to my new one. But if you don't have a website already, and if you're struggling to find content to fill, to, to bloat your website with, I've got some good tips for you. You don't need a million images on your store to start with. For a while, just load up your favorite ones. Get a few up there and running because you can always add more prints for sale tomorrow. You don't have to reinvent the wheel when it comes to design and making it look too personal. Let your images do the talking. A lot of those templates are designed by professionals and they look fantastic already. When adding your images to your online store, come up with a good template first. Add one image, work on its description and settings and prices, and, and really make it perfect first, and then replicate. It absolutely sucks once you have to go through and change a lot of images just because you put in a dimension wrong, you've worked out your pricing slightly wrong. Master one, and then duplicate. If you're not sure what to have on your website, at least have these three pages. A gallery, a store, and some information about you and how to contact you. Your website to start with doesn't have to be complicated. At least get those three up and running and the job is complete. Don't let the overall burden of trying to do too much stop you from getting it finished. Finally, as a nice little tip, instead of just having your images online in your store, I decided to create a, a mock-up, a wall mock-up of what my images would look like framed on a wall. Now I didn't want to print and frame and photograph all my images on a wall. So there are lots of websites and apps that you can use for creating a, a fake looking rendered framed picture of your image on a wall. I, I used quite a few of these but none of them quite worked for my needs. So in the end I ended up following a very bad YouTube tutorial about how to create my own. This here is a nice way to have a little template to drag and drop your images in to show your clients what it would look like framed and on a wall. Now this video is very much inspired by a viewer of the channel who reached out to me just last week asking if they could give me a donation for the work that I'm doing. And I've never received a donation before. And I really appreciate it, thank you truly. And this video is very much inspired by you. See, for the nine, 10 years that I've been doing photography, I've never had prints for sale online. And if someone wanted to give me money for something that I was doing anyway, maybe instead I'd be better off to give people an option of something to have back, to have a print as a way to support this channel. So if you'd like to support what I'm doing, please head over to my website and feel free to consider buying a print to help me keep doing this full time for a living. If you'd like to like, share and subscribe, I would really appreciate it guys. But otherwise, until next time, I'll catch you next time.